In this episode, we are bringing you another epic hunt in a very unique location right here in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. I've been invited to shoot a zebra up in the mountains just an hour north of my hometown Port Elizabeth at the beautiful Eelands River Safaris which boasts a wide variety of game with one of the most stunning backdrops you'll ever see and a lodge overlooking an untouched river valley. While the zebra is our target species, there's a twist to the way this hunt will play out tomorrow. A reminder that hunting in Africa just can't be choreographed. For now, we've pulled in at Yellens River Safari's state-of-the-art private shooting range, or ballistics laboratory as they call it, to get my rifle set up and to ring some steel. The range has solid undercover concrete benches and steel out to 900 meters, creating the perfect environment to check zero before a hunt and to verify bullet drop. It also has some targets set up for pistols, and when you're done shooting, you can light the fire and bry food just a few meters from the benches. I'm already pretty impressed with the way that this place is set up, but I've got some work to do, so time to get comfortable behind the 260. Right, well we've come out here to Irlands River, and weather is amazing, views are amazing. Uh, we've got the mountains laid out in front of us, but even better, we've got gongs all the way out to, I think it's 900 meters, uh, which is exactly what we need, because I haven't used my 260 with the LDXs in a long time. Um, as you may have seen, I've had these set up with 95 grand VMAXs for shooting monkeys and baboons. But we're shooting stuff tomorrow that's a bit bigger than a monkey and a baboon, so we're going to need something with a bit more punch. So we've come out here, we've fitted the Nexus Gen 2. It's the first time I've got this scope on this rifle. We've got the trigger cam, which we're busy setting up. We've got uh, an APW Warbird silencer and brake in the front, which is also brand new. I've never shot with that before. So we're going to take some time to zero. We're going to take some time to double check velocities. And then we're going to quickly create a profile on the Element Ballistics app and just make sure that we are good out to whatever distance we need to shoot to, uh, just in case we need to take a long shot tomorrow. But yeah, very happy. Uh, the setup is performing amazing as it always has. And we're gonna have some fun at the range and then head up to the lodge and wind down for the evening. So yeah, good to be out here. Beautiful place. And I think we're gonna have fun. With basic zeroing done and a good average velocity measured on the True Ballistics chronograph, I plug the data into the Element Ballistics app and update my profile for this rifle. In the mountainous terrain out here, there's a good chance I'll need it. I take time to check my data out to 900 meters and with all my firing solutions spot on, I bag up the rifle and we make our way back up the winding road towards the lodge. The drive up to the lodge is an experience in itself. The road twists and turns up switchbacks and takes us to a ridgeline dotted with pine trees and proteas. With the sun going down and the sky changing colour, the scene is set. We arrive at the lodge to find a fire already crackling outside, our rooms nicely made up, and a chef putting together a three-course meal. The place to be though was outside with a beer in hand. Well we've just pulled into the the lodge here right on top of the mountain and this place is amazing, the place of dreams. Literally switchbacks, 4x4 road all the way up to the top of the mountain, you're thinking you know where's this road taking me, pop over the peak and this place is just a piece of paradise on top of the mountain so yeah, we, we're enjoying the time here by the fire. It's still winter in South Africa, so it's a little bit chilly. We're warming up and we've got a, a nice poiki going there for, for supper. So we're going to relax, enjoy a good meal tonight, get some good rest and hunt hard tomorrow. Meanwhile, inside, our dinner is pretty much ready to be dished up. So we slowly make our way to the table and start discussing tomorrow's hunting plans between mouthfuls of amazing food. I get the feeling it's going to be a good day.
Right, it's just gone about 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, sun's up, and for the first time we're actually seeing the full extent of all these mountains and stuff here, so it's really awesome. Uh, freezing cold last night, but we were nice and comfy in our room, and the moment the sun popped up this morning, it just heated everything up, so uh, normally in winter like this you get pretty chilly starts, but I think, I think it's going to heat up pretty quickly, probably going to be taking this jacket off pretty soon. Just enjoying a quick cup of coffee by the lodge, we're going to have a nice uh, farm style breakfast out here. And then we're gonna hit the road and start moving and see if we can find some animals. I was expecting to hop on the back of a land cruiser, which is normally how our hunt in Africa begins, but our PH Connor had other plans as we left the lodge on foot and headed along the ridge with a rifle, binos, and spotting scope in hand. Well, we've just come up to a sort of an elevated viewpoint over here overlooking the mountain. Very cool landscape. It's sort of fanbos and pine trees, the you know, sort of high altitude mountain areas. And uh, we know the zebra have come through here in the past, so we're kind of setting up with a spotting scope, see if we can find the herd. And uh, you know, it's pretty windy today, so we don't want to be risking any long, long shots in the wind. We're going to try and strategize a, a good stalk on them, get within range, but yeah, first job is finding them. We sit still at this point for quite some time and we do spot some animals. A herd of blessed buck grazing on the opposite mountainside, a fleeting glimpse of a fallow deer galloping past, and finally a small group of zebras. You got like this first little dip. Yeah. And then it rises and then that second one. Mm -hmm. In the middle of that second one, sort of halfway between the road and that rock bank. They're a long way off and in quite a precarious position so we start to make our way down the mountain towards them in the hope that we can close the gap and put on a stalk. The challenge is that the route that we have to take to close the distance actually puts the herd in a blind spot and while moving in closer they disappear entirely. While trying to locate them we stumble upon a pair of black wildebeest who don't seem to have seen us and as they walk towards us, the split second decision is made to take one out. This might be the only opportunity we get the whole day, and we want to make it count. Cool. <laughs> wow. That was crazy. Yeah, sure. Um, Oh, that happened quickly. I was kind of preparing myself for a, for a longer shot this morning because this area is so open and hilly and kind of getting my mind ready to set up in an awkward position and take a steep shot. Um, but we came out here this morning kind of wanting to possibly prioritize uh, zebra because yeah, up here, if you've got zebra overgrazing on this, on this grass up here, then obviously you want to just make sure their, their numbers are kept in check. But as we were coming down this hill, moving towards a herd of zebra, uh, we had a couple black wildebeest just kind of walking in towards us. And um, Con and I looked at each other and yeah, got quickly set up on the sticks and yeah, started about 100 meters away, um, slowly moving in closer. I'm guessing it was about 75 meters when I took the shot, but yeah, it was close enough to put her on the head and uh, drop her around the spot. Um, I've got to say, this is my first shot with this APW silence and break. And it actually does quite a nice job of just reducing that that recoil. It's not just about controlling the shot, but it's about watching where you hit afterwards. And yeah, I was able to keep it surprisingly still on this on these sticks. So very happy. It's one down. And thank you so much. Well yeah, that was awesome. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's what I'd call a, a great start to our time here at uh, Elans River Safaris. This is a very cool spot. It's we're in the mountains here between the Elans River and the Kwazunga River, and this biome here is quite unique for South Africa. It's like with with I mean, you see a lot of fanbos and proteas and stuff like this in South Africa, but you have the pine trees, and it almost feels like you're somewhere else. It's it's yeah. very very unique. Um, so I'm obviously very grateful for the, for the opportunity to come out here. But yeah, Connor took us out here this morning. Um, and had an opportunity on this wildebeest from, from very close. It was a, one of those quick shots that kind of takes you by surprise, but um, yeah, ended up putting in a good shot. They say with, with wildebeest that the more bullets you put in them, the more alive they become, but that's not the case with a headshot. And 
I actually struggled to find the entrance hole, but the, I see the exit came out the opposite side of the, the head here and you know, blood coming out the ears and the nose, which is a sign that we got him in that, in that brain cavity in a good shot and straight down. So very happy. It's my first time hunting with a Nexus Gen 2 on an animal like this and with the APW brake. Obviously old reliable 260 that you know very well doing the job. So very happy. And once again, thank you very much. No problem. Yeah. yeah. Glad you enjoyed it. Cool. With it still being quite cold, we make the decision to leave the carcass behind and continue the hunt, knowing that we can come back and collect it later. Somewhere down in this valley, we know that the herd of zebras are probably better down and possibly even watching us, and we still want to get one down if possible. <laughs> 20 mile per hour wind. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> With the wind picking up to a brutal 20 miles per hour, our comfortable shooting distance is not only cut down quite a bit, ruling out a long range shot, but we also know that the animals might not want to be out in the open, making the hunting really difficult. Seeing nothing through the barnos, Connor decides that the zebra must be in a blind spot somewhere below us and that the only way to spot them would be to start moving down. Amazing uh, how different the wind is down here to just a couple hundred meters up there. Up there we measured it at 20 miles per hour. You can still hear it howling in the distance, but down here it's almost dead. It's probably like two to three miles per hour down here. It's almost nothing. Just goes to show taking sh um, any sort of distance shots in terrain like this is always super risky because it's impossible to measure the wind accurately between you and your target. Um, yeah, I know a few guys who can shoot well in these conditions, but it takes a lot of practice to kind of understand what the wind is doing. Um, yeah, it's also it's tough terrain to hunt in. It's not just walking up and down but if you have to shoot an animal here trying to recover <laughs> trying to recover it must be a mission so but yeah zebras have eluded us so far um they must have moved down this valley but we're gonna, we're gonna try to find them but yeah you, hey, difficult animals to to get for sure at the bottom we found some of the blessed buck that we'd seen earlier but alas no zebra it's crazy how such a big animal can simply vanish matt i think what we must do is just get to the top here there's a couple of wattle trees and stuff with the zebra they actually they make dust balls and that's okay. when they lie down during the day. Okay. So I think let's peek over here, have a check, and then if they're there we, we give it a go. So all the way up we go, giving the lungs and legs a good workout. Eventually we make it to the top and it's possible that the zebra are up here. If they bedded down in this half fan boss, they would probably be completely invisible. But we are forced to call it after a while. The hike is still worth it though, as the views from up here are box office. When we get back down, we radio in the cruiser and set to work recovering the old best. Thankfully it's not too far from this road and many hands make light work. If you wonder why we settled for a wildebeest instead of a zebra, well, with international hunting season being over, it's important to manage game populations on these properties. Each property has a carrying capacity and you don't want to exceed that. The zebra population here is too high and we need to take some of these animals off, but removing a wildebeest or two can have the same effect, ensuring that the carrying capacity is not exceeded. Well, that's a wrap from out here at Irlands River Safaris. Awesome morning of hunting. Uh, didn't quite get that zebra we were looking for, but worked hard and uh, did come home with a, with a wildebeest at the end of the day. So awesome to be out here. Once again, thanks to the guys at Irlands River Safaris for hosting us and Hopefully we'll be back one day. Thanks for watching guys.